friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using a whole bunch of Lawn Fawn sets including Mermaid For You Flip Flop, Mermaid For You, You Are Sublime, Ocean Shelfie, and Fantastic Friends. So I've stamped my images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink and I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with my mermaid skin and I'm using E000, E00, and E11. Starting with the E11 and laying in a little shadow under her hairline and then on the underside of her arms and above her little top and also on the sides of her belly. And then I'm going to blend that out with the E00 and finish with the E000. I'm also going to add some shading to the Hermit Crab's shell with these colors while I have them out. So I'm just using each one of those to separate the little sections of his shell and then blending toward the top with the lighter shades. And then I'm going to give my mermaid some rosy cheeks using R11 and R20, just a little oval with the R20 and then going around that to blend it out with the R11. Then I'm going to do my mermaid's hair and I'm going to use E50, E51, and E53. Now because she is drawn more simply and there's not really any lines in the middle of her hair, I am going to keep it a little bit more on the simple side. I started with my lightest shade, the E50, and just added a little bit of darkness at the top corner of her bangs and then on the tips of her hair at the bottom. Darkening that up a bit with the E51, just doing some little flick motions. And then I'll also go in with my darkest shade, which is the E53, and just add a little bit of that as well. Once I have all of those colors laid in, I'm going to work my way back down in the reverse. So I'll go back to my E51 and just blend that out again using that flicking motion and then I'll finish with the E50, so it's lightest on the crown of her head. I also wanted to add a little detail to my Hermit Crab's shell, so I'm using that E53 and also E55 and E57, just doing a few little spots here and there on that with that E57, and then blending out the edge of that with the E55. And then I'll also use that E53 just to kind of fade out the edges of that and make it look a little bit more natural. And I think that just gives him a little fun personality. And then I'm going to move on to her little bikini top. I'm going to do that in orange. I'm using YR04, YR07, and YR09. Adding some darkness to the edges with the YR09. I'm blending toward the center with the YR07 and then the YR04. And then I'm also going to do some of the other corals and plants with this combo. I wanted to limit my color palette to just a very simple uh, couple of shades and have some really bright and fun summertime colors in the scene. So I thought these would be great. I did want them to look just a little bit different than the tone of her bikini top though. So I'm leaving a little sliver of space and I'm going to fill that in with some yellow. I picked Y17 and that almost gives it like this fiery glow, like a fire coral or something like that. So I'm gonna do that one and then the one to the right of that as well. Just doing a little line with the YR09 and then blending that out with the YR07. Next is the YR04 and I saved a little room on that one as well for that Y17. Then I'll go back to just those three orange shades for the starfish. I wanted to tie that brighter orange in somewhere else on the scene, so I thought that would be perfect. And then I'll also use the YR04 to do the little um, scallops down the seahorse's back. 
The rest of the seahorse I'm going to do in yellow and I chose Y13, Y15 and then kept that Y17. So that's also just going to really tie into that color palette but just give me a little bit of a different look. So I used the Y17 first, blend it out with the Y15 and then the Y13 and I'm going to do the little clamshell with these shades as well just to tie in that yellow somewhere else in the scene. Next I'm going to pull in some hot pink and I chose RV13, RV14, RV17, and RV19. I'm using four shades because I really wanted her tail to look dynamic. So I used the RV19 first, blend it out with the RV17, then the RV14, and then I'm saving a little bit of room there for that highlight shade, that RV13 over on the left. And that's going to tie in nicely with that hot pink coral from Mermaid For You. And I stamped that in Long Vaughn's Plastic Flamingo Ink. I'm also going to use these shades to do the little hermit crab. I didn't want to use red on the scene because like I said, I wanted to stick to this limited color palette. So I did him in the hot pink instead and I think he turned out really cute that way. Next I have all these stones and I wanted to do something other than gray or black or brown. So I decided to do them in like a pale blue. I picked B quadruple zero, B zero zero, and B01. So I'm using that B01 to add a little shading on each of those rocks. That's going to be my darkest. And then I'm blending that out with the B00. I'm not being too precise because this is rock, so it doesn't need to be perfectly smooth. It can have some texture to it. And then I'll take that B quadruple zero and just blend out all of the highlighted areas, just nice and quick. For the kelp and seaweed, I'm going to do green and I picked G24 and G28. They're really small, so just the two shades are fine. I did a solid coverage of the G24 first, and then I'm going to go back in with that G28 and just flick in a small little dot um, at the base of each leaf closest to the stem, just to give it a little bit extra texture or um, dimension there. And then for the other one, I'm just going to do a line of that G28 on the inner curve. And then I'll blend that out with the G24. I probably could have squeezed a third shade in there, but like I said, those two shades are fine. And then for the little fish, I didn't want to add another color into my palette. So I decided to just do a different tone of green picked a more yellowy green, a little more vibrant. I chose YG13 and YG17 and just did the two shades on them as well since they were so super tiny. And then I'm going to trim these images out with their coordinating dies. For my background, I'm taking a piece of Bristol Smooth Service cardstock and I'm going to blend on some Distress Oxides. The first shade that I'm using is Salvage Patina and I'm going to cover probably about half of this panel with that shade. I want to have kind of like a base coat of this color even though I'm going to add several more on top of it. And I decided to do it kind of at a diagonal so I'm keeping that color more towards the top right. And then I'm going to bring in my next shade, which is Peacock Feathers. So I'm going to bring that down in the diagonal as well and just overlap some of that salvage patina and bring that color a little further down that panel. Then I will go back to my salvage patina to blend out the edge to make everything nice and smooth again. Just kind of work back and forth with those two blending tools. And then I'm going to introduce some green. I'm going to use Lucky Clover. This one is um, a very blue toned green, so I think it works really well with the peacock feathers. 
So I'm going to fill in that bottom left corner and then also bring it up just slightly on the right corner. I want to create kind of an uneven floor there. And then to darken that up even further, I'm going to bring in some pine needles. So that one I'm going to just keep down to those two corners and the bottom edge just to really set that off. Um, and then I will go back to my Lucky Clover and blend that out a little bit into the peacock feathers once again. And just blend that back and forth until I have a look that I'm happy with. Then I'm going to take some liquid stardust from Lawn Fawn. I'm going to squirt that onto an acrylic block and add a little bit of water to that so it's nice and flowy. And I'm going to pick that up with a fine tipped paintbrush and splatter that all over my background. It's going to give it a really pretty iridescent shimmer, especially when you tip it into the light. Once that's had a chance to dry a bit, I'm going to grab the Lawn Fawn plaid stencil. This is just one of that two-step stencil. And I had an idea. I'm going to try it out and see if it works. Hopefully it does. Um, I'm going to use some white pigment ink. Any of white pigment ink would work. And a little finger dauber. And I'm going to go down this center stripe here and try to add a little bit of light some sun rays coming in from that top right corner. I don't want it to go all the way down. I want it to kind of fade as it gets toward the bottom. And then I'm going to kind of position the next one down. I don't want the perfect lines. I want it to be more like sun rays, you know, tilted a little bit. So I'm gonna um, just kind of figure out where I need those lines to be and then just fill that in with that white pigment ink. And I'm not worrying about everything connecting at that top right corner because I am going to trim this down a bit. So if that isn't perfect up there, that's totally fine. I was a little bit too sloppy with that. My stencil lifted up, so I just dabbed up some of that extra pigment ink so it wouldn't get smeared around. And then I'm going to just do two more stripes. So I'm adding one more on the, um, the bottom and then one more at the top. So Lawn Fawn also has a white pigment ink. Um, Yeti is what it's called. I just have this really old color box ink and it still works. So uh, that's the one I chose. But um, the Lawn Fawn one is a great one too. And... You could make this a little bit bolder. I was going for something more subtle, so I didn't add a ton of ink. This is actually going to fade and get even more subtle. So if you wanted it to be darker, you might want to add another layer of ink. I trimmed that panel down with the outside in stitch rectangle stackables. And now I'm going to stamp my sentiment using VersaFine Onyx Black ink. This layers really well over the Distress Oxides and especially on this Bristol paper, but it does stay wet for a while, so you have to be really careful or heat set it. You're going to see I'm going to have an accident with it later on, but we will end up fixing it. I'm also going to do a liner for the inside of my card because I'm using a dark colored card base. So I'm stamping another mermaid and some uh, fish from Mermaid For You and You're Fantastic from Fantastic Friends. So the card base that I'm using is Lawn Fawn Rainforest cardstock. I scored and folded that to a standard A2 size card. So it's four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall with a top fold. I added my insert to the inside and now I'm going to add my focal panel on top. Just making sure that that's right in the center and I'm avoiding that sentiment so it doesn't get smeared. And then I'm going to start to add in my images. And I wanted to create this kind of tall, rocky outcropping with the coral and the little plants kind of growing out of it. So I'm adding that biggest rock first. And then I'm going to take one of these little hot pink corals and I'm going to add that down at the bottom right corner of that rock. So it's kind of growing in front. And then I'm going to stack another one of these stones behind the larger rock just to kind of continue that. And it doesn't have to fit perfect because I'm going to cover up the little gaps in between. 
And then this one I thought I was going to adhere with liquid glue, but I decided it needed to have foam tape. So I just added some little foams to the backs of the three little points and then stuck that down into place. And right there is where I smeared my sentiment. Ugh, made me so mad. Um, but I am going to fix that in just a second. I actually haven't even realized it yet. Um, right here is when I'm going to realize and start to freak out a little bit. Um, but, you know, everything can be fixed. It's all just paper and cardstock. I didn't want to toss all the work that I had done. So I'm just going to continue creating this little stack here and then I'll worry about what to do about that sentiment. So I'm going to add these two little uh, kelp kind of sticking out of the top of that rocky cropping. And then I'm going to create a much smaller little grouping over on the right hand side. And by the way, I'm just tossing all of the little release papers into my Twiddler's Nook embellishment tray. That way I can just take the whole thing to the trash when I'm done. So I'm adding another little stone and some plants and my little hermit crab. So that's going to tie in all of those colors that are over on the left hand side, just in a much smaller arrangement. Then I'm going to take the little starfish and the seashell and add those to the little group over on the left. And that yellow clamshell is going to kind of cover up that gap between the largest and middle stone. Before I add any more images, I really did need to figure out what I was going to do about that sentiment because it would matter to the placement of the other images. So I decided to white heat emboss that onto a piece of black cardstock. It's Lawn Fawn Black Licorice cardstock. So I just treated that with my EK Success powder tool, stamped it in Versamark ink, and now I'm going to coat it with white embossing powder tap off any excess from the back, and then I'll grab my heat gun. I'm gonna heat that up off to the side for a couple of seconds, and then I like to come at it from the back first and then bring it toward the front just to kind of minimize any warping. And then once that's dry, I'm going to buff that off with a microfiber cloth and trim it down with one of the stitched circle stackables. So I'm going to add some liquid glue to the back of that. I didn't stamp the uh, exclamation point because it wasn't going to fit on there quite right. So I'm just going to tuck that down behind those kelp to kind of integrate the sentiment a little bit more into the scene and kind of just get that situated there over on the top left. And now I can finish with the rest of my images. So I'm going to do my mermaid next and have her kind of curved towards the edge of that sentiment. And then right on the right hand side below her, I'm going to add the seahorse. And then I've got a tiny little fish that I'm going to tuck kind of coming out of that rocky outcropping. So the mermaid and the seahorse have come to ask him if he'd like to come out and play. And then the rest of his little group I'm going to add at the top. And I'm going to overlap that sentiment once again just to further integrate that into the scene. Just a tiny bit there and I'll have those fish at the top. I wanted to add some clear droplets to my scene, so I dumped the 4mm into my embellishment tray once again from Twiddler's Nook, and then the larger size, the 6mm, I just added onto my work surface because I want to be able to dump the smaller ones back into the container, and I only needed a couple of the big ones. So I squeezed out a little Ranger multimedia mat onto my scrap cardstock, and I'm picking up those clear droplets with my Studio Katia embellishment wand and dipping those into the glue and then just setting them down into place. It makes it really easy to just uh, pick those up and figure out where you want to place them and pop them down. And they do look a little bit milky right now, but that glue does dry perfectly clear, so they'll be 
uh, completely clear to the background, you know, once everything is dry. So I'm just tucking them here and there wherever I think that they look good and trying to use a mix of both sizes. Although I want, you know, just the four of the larger size and then, you know, however many of the smaller ones I think looks great to fill up the rest of that space. So I'm gonna do one more and then I thought about doing one extra, but I didn't, I decided I liked the way that it looked right now. I didn't wanna cover up too much of the rest of that light that was coming down. So I dumped that back into my container and I needed to also add a little bit of stardust stickles so I could have some sparkle on the card. Can't have a mermaid card without a little sparkle. So I did that on her bikini top and also down her tail, down the little um, fin of the seahorse and a little bit on the hermit crab as well, although I didn't want to cover his eyes, so I was just careful with where I placed it. I put it on my seashells and some of these little corals and plants, and then also on the bellies of each of the little fish. I'll lift that up so you can get a closer look at all the detail and see how that stickles catches the light, and give you another peek at the inside. So what do you think about my sentiment fix? What would you have done instead? I'd love to know down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of the products I use, you'll find them listed and linked in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.